Hey guys, let's talk about subwoofers. So, if you're watching this video, you're probably considering putting a subwoofer in your vehicle um, or maybe in your house. And same thing is going to apply in both cases, but we mainly focus on car audio on this channel. <laughs> Now, you're probably already considering the question, should I go sealed or should I go ported? <clears throat> well, that's easy. Yes. <laughs> Let me explain. In my vehicle, I actually have both a ported and sealed enclosure. I have a small sealed enclosure in the front playing everything from 45 hertz up to 150 hertz. And then I've got a big uh, ported wall on my C pillar of my car playing from 25 hertz up to 45 hertz. So I did both. I cheated. <laughs> but back on target, the uh, in essence, the subwoofer has one job. No matter what kind of box you're building, no matter what kind of enclosure it is, uh, no matter what kind of sub it is, the subwoofer's job is to play the lowest frequencies all the way up to the point to where whatever speaker is job to take over can take over, right? In my case, I got 150 hertz on the doors, so everything below 150 hertz I got to cover with a subwoofer. It's just a large speaker that's designed to play low frequencies. That's all it is. So let's talk about enclosures a little bit. A sealed enclosure, for number one, uh, is actually a second order. Yeah, it's a second order enclosure. So, and uh, and I, I'm not 100% on orders. I get these mixed up a little bit. But the first order is a baffle. So if you have an infinite baffle speaker, and it's just got a wall that goes from in all directions, or you know that's an infinite baffle, that is a first order. Uh, second order is when the baffle wraps around and creates a box because now you've got an infinite baffle because it's wrapping around and connecting to itself, but you've got pressure inside that enclosure and that pressure is an order. Anything that affects the sound, anything that's in the construction of the, the box that affects the sound like that and adds something else to control the speaker is an order. So at that point, you've got a second order. A ported enclosure is technically a fourth order. And the reason for that is it has a hole in it, which is an order. And the, the hole has a tube or a port, which is an order. Now, I'm, I think I'm right on that. If I'm not, somebody correct me in the comments. Either way it goes, a ported enclosure has a benefit of giving you more efficiency at the cost of creating a bit of a hump. So where a sealed enclosure has a nice slow hump like this, so your lowest frequencies are down here, right? Like your 20 hertz, and then you're like 40 hertz is up here, right? Well, that sealed enclosure is just gonna have a nice kind of a gradual slope to that. Um, Whereas a ported enclosure, say one tuned at 32 hertz, is going to go down quicker below 32 hertz. It's going to have more of a fall off. And at 32 hertz, it's going to have a nice peak. Then it's going to kind of fall down a little bit towards 40. So it's going to have a peak up there at 32 hertz and kind of a drop down to the, and then nothing down below 32 hertz. It's just going to fall off quickly, uh, which makes a ported enclosure a good candidate because you can control where that frequency is going to be and which means you get the most efficiency at that spot where you're going to be listening to music very common to use ported enclosures in every part of of audio reproduction because you can control where the peak is but most of your sq guys are going to be running and sq means sound quality most of your sq guys are going to be running sealed enclosures. And it's because, on average, they kind of have a nice smooth roll. And you can always use the EQ to boost those frequencies where it's starting to roll off. A sealed enclosure gives you more control over the cone. 
That's the most important part of it. They're nice and tight. The bass response is quick. Kick drums are going to be represented properly. Uh, if you listen to music and you know there's a bass thing where they go do 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 right? But then when you hear it on a system, it goes just kind of barfs out. It doesn't sound do 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 do. There's no do 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 do. It's just do 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 do. Right? Pardon the sound effects, but I can't think of another way to really explain that. If you've heard that, that's what happens when you have a ported enclosure. Just brrr. It doesn't do that well. It does boom, boom, boom well. It doesn't do 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 well. Sealed enclosure does that quick, quick bang a lot better, much smoother. So if the type of music you're listening to includes a lot of quick bass, fast kick drums, you know, things like that. Sealed enclosure is going to give you a better experience no matter what your buddy tells you, okay? Um, and be careful taking advice from somebody who's trying to sell you something. <laughs> yeah, the, this interest or, you know, in, in selling you something. So there's that. Anyway. A sealed enclosure is going to give you more accuracy, more detail, more consistent uh, sound. And so, but at, at the cost of being less efficient, it's like half as efficient as a ported enclosure. So if you're trying to get loud, you're going to need a lot more power and, you know, yeah. <clears throat> now, in the ported enclosure world, uh, you've got a whole lot, but we're going to consider three basic types because they're the three most common ported enclosures. Number one, that's the standard issue ported enclosure. An enclosure with a hole and some kind of tube in it or a slot that's got a tube. Now, the way that works is the ported enclosure, and I'll explain why it's bad for that quick base response too. <clears throat> As that subwoofer is moving in and out, you're getting the sound wave from the front of that cone. Well, the back of the cone is producing one as well. Now, when, you're, when you make a hole in the box, you're not letting the sound out. What you're doing is you're using the movement of the air on the back of that cone to create a plug of air inside the tube, the port. That plug of air is just air that's staying inside the tube it's not coming out it's not going back in it's just staying there like when you suck up some soda in a straw and you hold the end of it and the, it just stays in like that except it's air not soda that plug of air as it's moving in and out of that port is actually acting like a speaker over here so you got your speaker over here and this plug of air over here those two are working together that's where you get the efficiency at. Now, that plug of air will only do that air plug thing at certain frequency range. So, like, let's say you've got it tuned at 30 hertz. A 30 hertz tuning on your port. This speaker's playing at, 30, it's playing at say, 20 hertz right now, right? So, why the speaker is tuned at 30 hertz, but it's or 30, yeah, 30 hertz, it's playing at 20 hertz, the back waves off that speaker are escaping out of the box and being out of phase with the front of that cone causes a null it's just like when you hook your subwoofers up and one of them in reverse to the other you get nothing you get hardly any bass well whenever you're not at the tune on that port when you're below it or above it the frequency will come off the back of that speaker and be the reverse of the frequency on the front that's why a peaky enclosure happens whenever you have that. So when you have a, a ported enclosure, it's tuned at 30 hertz. And you're playing below it. Your, the, the port, the hole in the box is canceling out with the cone of the box. Those two frequencies are the reverse of each other. They cancel it out. So that makes your slope fall off really fast. Same thing above the port tuning. You have... The back of the speaker being out of phase with the front of the speaker and so you effectively have no baffle and so 
it cancels itself out. And that's one, uh, that's the reason why a ported enclosure doesn't have any real output at any great distance from its port tuning. You get too far below the port tuning and it cancels itself on both sides. That's the downside of a ported enclosure. This driver goes boom, and then when it comes back, it sends that wave over here to go boom. So from that perspective, let's consider this. Boom, 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 boom. Then this stops, and this goes one more time. So this goes first, then they get together, then this stops, and then that stops. You see what I mean? Since this speaker is working off the back end of this one, it's one pulse behind. That is why it's sloppy. So when you go, it just goes, because those notes are canceled by the fact that that port is one pulse behind the driver. Back on to ports and uh, orders. So you have the sealed enclosure, which is the second. You have the first order, which is about infinite baffle, sealed enclosure, which is the second order. And then there is no real third enclosure, third order. You go straight to the fourth. Fourth order is a ported enclosure. Then you've got what we call a fourth order. See, that's the thing. Third order doesn't exist, but we call a fourth order a sealed enclosure with it's playing into a chamber with another port. That's what we call a fourth order. And I know it's weird, and I have a hard time keeping up with the orders down at the very bottom because of that. Um, if you've seen a truck or a vehicle where they have subs back here behind them on a platform, right, back behind them playing like this, then it's got like a cavity that goes up and comes forward, and, and then there's this big square area here. The air's coming out of there. That's either a fourth order or a sixth order enclosure. Now, the way, the way you know the difference is, if it's a sixth order, somewhere back there in the back, there's going to be a tube coming up out of that bottom chamber. It'll have a tube that plays into that top chamber. If it's a fourth order, there won't be one of those. So, in a fourth order, you have that sealed enclosure down there, subwoofer setting in it, playing into this chamber, which turns into a port at the front. And, of course, in a box, you would have a port, no speaker visible, right? You have a port that goes into a chamber, and inside that chamber, you would see a speaker in there. And that speaker would be mounted into a sealed section of that box. That's a fourth order. The sixth order would be the same thing as I just described, except there would also be a port inside the box. So you'd stick your hand through the port, you'd fill the cone of the speaker, and there'd be a port over here, and then that would be a chamber that that speaker... So you'd have a ported enclosure playing into a port. That's five and six orders. So that would be a series six order. Then you got a parallel sixth order where you would have a subwoofer mounted on a piece of wood, or let's say, let's, let's do it this way. You got a box here with a port, a box here with a port. The two boxes are smashed together in a common wall, and the subwoofer's mounted on that wall. Now you've got a series or a parallel, parallel sixth order. This one will be tuned to one frequency, and this port will be tuned to another frequency. Usually it's like 20 and 40, 22 and 42, something like that. 15 and 35, whatever you want. It's usually about 20 hertz in between them. And that creates something that looks kind of like that. <laughs> if you're lucky. Designing a fourth order or a sixth order, especially a sixth order, is very difficult. And if you don't do it right, you'll waste your time and your money and end up with something that's crap. But if you do it right, you'll wind up with something that's truly amazing. So, Unless you're willing to pay someone uh, to design the box for you and or help you build it and or build it for you. Or unless you're willing to 
buy the software, do the research, learn how to do it, then make the mistakes because there are lots of those. Make the mistakes, build it yourself, make some more mistakes, figure it out, do better and do better. Unless you're willing to go through one of those routes, I would suggest starting out, if you're going to build it yourself, with a sealed enclosure. Because as long as you get the cubic feet inside the box, close to the, the cubic feet required by the sub, it's going to sound good. Uh, as long as you don't get any leaks in the box, or even if you do, uh, as long as there are not any bad leaks, it's still going to sound pretty good. Uh, you got to build a sealed enclosure. It, the word is sealed. That's important. So get all those gaps filled and get something close to the right airspace. And the airspace required is usually listed uh, on the enclosure, on the subwoofer uh, information where you buy it. And if not, then I wouldn't buy that subwoofer. <laughs> it's that simple. If the company doesn't take their time to give you an information on basically how much airspace it needs, I, I don't want nothing to do with them. Just saying. Um, I'm not going to buy from that company. Um, and that rolls out a lot of cheap stuff out there. So, you know, it is what it is. But if you want help in that department and you want to get an enclosure that's accurately built for a subwoofer, then head over to GP Car Audio. Look at the true spec boxes. The true spec boxes are built specifically for a driver. So if you see one listed for a Sundown U12, this box is designed specifically for a Sundown U12. Whatever, the, the they have them for all sorts of different woofers. If you tell them what woofer you need, what woofer you're building it for, they will build you a box to fit that woofer. And then all you have to do is spend money. You don't have to do any other work yourself. You just give them money and they give you stuff. And the prices are very reasonable. Now, if you're looking for prefab, preloaded stuff, you're looking for subwoofers to put in those boxes, if you're looking for amplifiers, wires, anything you can think of to do with car audio, Big Jeff, baby. Head over to Big Jeff, the link down below. Use coupon code CAE and save money. It's good for everybody. It's good for the earth. It's recycling. It's green. It makes trees happy. Okay? Makes the trees. It makes the puppies happy. All right? Now, before you go getting a subwoofer or getting a box or getting anything, you need to figure out how much space you're willing to give up in your vehicle. Because base takes space. Now, once you know how much space you're willing to give up in your vehicle, um, if you would like, you can send me an email and we could talk about it. If you don't want to communicate with me through email, you could hit me up on Sunday at 7 p.m. when I do the live show. I answer questions during the live show. And if you have those questions, have the information hit, rent, handy, and we'll do our best to answer those dang questions during that live show. But once you figure out how much airspace you have to work with in your vehicle, of course, you have to uh, subtract about 10 to 15% from that just for the box, the, the thickness of materials and all that stuff. <clears throat> I would say probably about 20%. Get that number and look at the drivers that you're thinking about using and pick one that fits within that space. Also, consider uh, which type of box. If you're using a ported enclosure, it's going to need a lot bigger overall construction because you have to include the port inside that airspace. So whatever space you, you're using has to also include the size of that port that's going to be stuffed in that box. Unless you want a Mario port where it's sticking out like this, trying to salute you. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Just saying. Uh, so, and, and if you don't want to tackle any of that, get the information figured out, what, you, what space you're willing to give up, 
talk to a good uh, someone who can design a box for you. There are people out there that do that. There's people that you can get on the internet and get a box designed from. Tell them what your vehicle is, you know, communicate back and forth, get them, get them clued in as to what's going on, and they'll design something for you and send you a blueprint where you can just cut it and print it and, and, uh, and build it yourself. Or you can get a glue it and screw it box from GP Car Audio. You can't go wrong with either one. Um, the whole point is take your time, figure out your enclosure first, then find subwoofers to fit that enclosure, and then go back and get the, the enclosure tweaked to the point to where it fits the subwoofers you found. And lastly, make sure that the finished subwoofer enclosure is going to fit through the opening into the space that you want it in your vehicle. Just because the box will fit in your trunk doesn't mean it will fit through the hole and go over the, and through and get in there. And you want the wall of shame, and we've all been on it. <laughs> Spend all that time buying or building, designing and loading and wiring and carpeting a box only to not be able to get it through the hole in your car to the inside. And man, what a demoralizing slap in the face that is. And it's been done many times before. It'll be done again, too. Whoever's watching this video, some of you guys have done it. If you have, be sure and leave that stuff in the comments. Guys, I'm offering my services to help you figure out what to do through email and through my live show. I don't ask anything in return except that you hit that subscribe button. I'm giving you my time, my effort, and my energy, my headache. All I want you to do is click that subscribe button. So easy. Peace, guys.